Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, it's been about four or five months since my last video. I thought uh, maybe I'd do another update, show you what I've been working on. Um, we'll start with this nose cone first. I did finally complete complete uh, the design for this. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Uh, there's a few little gaps here that maybe I'll try to figure out how to fill in. But um, yeah, maybe in a future video where I talk about the entire uh, SRB, I can uh, dismantle this and show you all of the different uh, diameters that are being used here. Um, so we'll put that aside. Next item is what I spent most of my time on. Actually, uh, uh, this was shown at Brick Can in May. And on my last video, this was still a work in progress, probably only 40% complete. Um, this is about 95% complete. It might look done, but uh, there's a few design things here that need to change. For one, these uh, solar panels are not accurate. They have to be a little bit wider and they need a little bit more hardware on the sides. Uh, we'll remove them for now so we can get a better look at things. Ooh, this should pop out. There we go. Uh, maybe I'll start with showing you some of the detail on here. So right here we've got a, the waveguide over to this uh, low gain antenna. Uh, the idea for this, uh, there's a new part available from Lego, which is a minifig um, stand that uh, should be a little bit smaller so I can uh, recess this a little bit further. So that's one of the low, low gain antennas, sorry. And then we got another low gain antenna on the back end right here. This guy. Um, this is a docking target. Um, I'm not sure what this is. It's some um, cabling for docking hardware or something like that. Uh, we've got some vent ports here. On the side, we've got all the, whoops, all the little grab bars. Um, I did not model the the doors. These these are on the real thing. These are doors that open, but uh, that was proving to be a bit difficult. So um, maybe I'll explore that later on. Uh, so we got all these little grab bars. Um, we'll go in all the way around. Right here, we've got. Um, this is like a some kind of protective plate where it mounts inside the shuttle when it was delivered on orbit. It needed uh, this guy to keep things stable on launch. So we got one on each side, and then we got another pair right here. And a lot of time was spent on the design to figure out how to get these little arms at at the right angle. Now this is not really to scale. These are a lot. Uh, this, this area is a lot smaller, but um, on this model, I thought this ended up being quite a good size to represent what these this structure is supposed to look like. Um, and it has a nice technique for getting this angle. So I'll try to show you that in a minute. Um, here we have a magnetic torquer. And there's four of them all the way around here. One, two, three, four. Oh, then we can't forget the these two guys right here this is where the cannon arm would latch on in order to grab the satellite and here uh, we've got um, when i first started modeling this i thought these might have been some kind of engine bell or something but what these are, are star trackers for helping uh, navigate in space and point in the correct direction so we've got these two trackers they're at i forget what angle they're at and then we got one one here this is supposed to be like an oval shape uh, this was about the best i could do to get that shape uh, i think it looks okay uh, here we've got the high gain antenna that flips out one on the top one on the bottom And finally, we've got the 
cover, front cover here, it's going to open up and you can have a look inside and yeah, I tried to try to keep a nice big empty space like there's supposed to be in there. Uh, it's a bit difficult to pull these panels off because they're all kind of inter interlaced. Uh, but we'll try to get one off so I can show you that uh, the technique for these um, for this structure. I'll leave that open. So let's see if we can get this off. Oh, I'm gonna have to remove this torquer. Maybe remove this one. Wiggle it a little bit. Maybe I should be doing the other side because that doesn't have the waveguide. So that might be a little bit easier to get off. So yeah, we'll get rid of this torquer and this one. This actually works out. I got to, I borrowed those parts from somebody else, so I got to give them back. Oh yeah, yeah, let's see. Yep, here we go. Oh, okay, it mostly comes off in one piece. What's going on here? You might imagine this was a bit difficult to get together. <laughs> there we go. So the technique I use here is um, these little one by one round plates with a bar protruding out the side. I use those uh, a pair of those to give me several degrees of freedom in order to allow me to point each of these little bars in the correct direction. So it allows a, an, an interesting angle, right? It's 15 or 20 degrees off that way, 15 or 20 degrees off that way. So if it doesn't have any structural capability can't take any kind of load, but from a detail perspective, I think that could be quite useful to somebody. Get a good look at that here. Okay, so um, this model, I plan to finish my stud.io plans because uh, it was partially designed on the computer. So I'll finish those off and I hope to uh, upload them somewhere, make them available online so you could build build one of these yourselves. Um, but it will include the properly designed solar panels. So who knows when that'll happen? <laughs> Definitely a few months away. Okay, and last but not least, uh, the other model that I started working on. It's a model of a Falcon 9. Mini fig scale, of course. Uh, so we've got, well, currently eight engine bells. There is a spot in the center for another one, but because it hangs down a little bit farther, I removed it so that this can stand, stand flat on the table when I'm working on it. Um, we can see, well, in the, because it's black, it's sometimes difficult to see, but here we've got the GSE connection, connection. Um, we've got points here, these are the mount points for the landing legs. And I've got a landing leg here that I can show you. So here's a landing leg. This is not complete by any stretch. Uh, it's still, I'm still kind of prototyping things. But the idea is that the, you know what, I'm going to remove the, uh, the p piston first. So we'll get this landing leg attached. So you can attach on here like this. Oops. Oops. Okay, so the landing leg can pivot freely like that. Um, and then this guy, which is the piston, will temporarily attach him. And then, whoops, put him on the wrong side. Well, if you see on oh, over here, we've got a little uh, mount point. So that piston would attach right here. 
So when the rocket has landed, it's about this height. So there you see the leg. Maybe this angle is a bit better. Yeah, it attaches like this. So with four legs on there, it'll look pretty good. Um, I couldn't figure out a way to, to actuate this. Um, if you think about it, this piston has to compress. When, when this leg folds up, this piston has to com compress. And um, I could not figure out a good way to allow that to happen. Uh, we've got a Technic axle that runs the entire length of this for, for strength. Um, I don't know, maybe if there was, I was to put a hole in here and allow that to sort of compress, uh, feed inside the, in, inside the rocket while, while this pivoted over, but that seems like it's, uh, would be too difficult to achieve. So we'll just allow it to be either poseable with the legs deployed or poseable with the legs, uh, stowed like that. Yeah, so, um. Hope you enjoyed this update. I will try to upload again in another couple months uh, with progress on these and other models. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.